In this lecture, we are going to start writing the functionality for the student class. We already know what is the requirement, so we are going to begin writing the functionality now. So I'm going to open student.php inside of SROC folder. Then the first thing I'm going to do here is to actually define some properties. And all the properties that I want to define for this class are going to be private. Say so private ID. And then we can put a comment at the top here. It's going to be ID. The ID of the student. So this is something that you should get into the practice of doing. Providing comments for the properties of a class. So I'm not going to do that for all of the properties that we have in this demonstration, but this is something that you should consider doing. This is going to be for the name of the student. And then for simplicity, I'm just going to add more properties here. Private result, private remark, private grade. And then I'm going to create some set of properties for the subjects. So we're going to say subject one, then we're going to say sub two, then we're going to say sub three, sub four, and sub five. So we have five subjects. And then the next thing we want to do here is to create a constructor. The purpose of this constructor is to bootstrap the student class and then set the name of the student and also the ID of the student. So when we create a new student, this student is going to have a name and the student is also going to have an ID. So we say public function underscore underscore construct. This is going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be the ID and then the second one is going to be the name. And then we can say this ID is equal to the ID that is passed in. And then this name equal to name and then to finish up this constructor we are going to type int it so that we specify the type of parameter that should be passing here for the id it should be an int and then for the name it should be a string all right so that's all for the constructor the next method that we're going to create is to get the name of the student so we're going to say public function get name and this is going to return a string so in PHP 7, we can actually specify return type for a specific function. So we're saying this function should return a string. And what does it return? This name. And then we're going to create another one to return the ID of the student. So public function get ID. And this is going to return an int. So we can say return this ID. The next function that we want to create will be a function to actually get the mark for each of the subject and then assign it to the properties that we've created here so that will be a public method that is going to actually set the mark so it's a public function set mark okay so that will be set marks and then we are going to pass in floats first one is going to be for subject one and then a float subject two so we're going to have this on t subject five subject three then we have another one subject four and then the last one is going to be subject five this doesn't return anything and the only thing we are going to do here is say this subject one should be equal to subject one this subject two should be equal to subject two this sub three should be equal to sub three this sub four should be equal to the parameter sub four and this sub five should be equal to the parameter sub five and that's all we need to do for the set mark method the next method that we want to create is a method to get the total score so now we have a method to set marks this is going to take all of the mark of the student and we know that there are five subjects based on the requirement so now we are going to get the total score for this particular student so it's a public function total score and this is going to return a float so we can say return subject one so that will be this sub one plus this sub two plus this sub three until we reach sub five so we sub four right so that'll be all for the total score method the next method that we want to create now will be to get the average public function average score. So we want to get the average score for this student. 
we already know what is the total number of subjects that a student can take for a semester, which is five. So what we can do is say this average. See, we need to create the property here, average. You can say here, return this average is equal to. Okay, so right here, we need to make some changes to the total score method. Right here, we can say this total so that we can actually store that in a property inside of the class. So let's come back here and create a property called total. So we say this total is equal to all of this. And then here we can say return this average, this total divided by five. And then the next one that we want to create will be to actually get the grade. So the grade will be basically based on what your average score is. So if your average score is 70 and above, you're going to be in the A grade. If it is between 60 and 69, you'll be in the B grade. And if it is between 50 and 59, you'll be in the C grade. And if it is between 40 to 49, you'll be in the D grade. And if it is between 0 and 39, you're going to be in F grade. So we're going to write a simple method here to actually get the grade of this particular student. Public function grade. This is going to return a string. Here we are going to do a check on the average score of this particular student. So we're going to say if this average is greater than 70, and we also want to ensure that the average is not greater than 100, because the maximum you can get would be 100. So we're going to say, and this average is less than or equal to 100. So if this is the case, we are going to say, return this grade equal to the string A. So that means this is an A student. And then we can probably duplicate this into four or five lines and then just edit it. For B, it is going to be from 60 and then 69. 60 here let's say 69.9 c is going to be 50 59.9 d is going to be 40 49.9 and then we actually need one more for f so that will be between 0 39.9 f if it is not inside any of these we're just going to say return this grade equal to fail Right, so let's get to the next method. The next method is going to be a method to get the remark. So based on the grade of the student, we are going to set the remark for that specific student. So there are going to be different categories. If you are an A, the remark is going to be excellent. If you are in B, the remark is going to be very good. If you are C, it is going to be good. D is going to be fair. And then the default will be very poor. So we can actually set this to unknown because the mark is not within what we are calculating it's a public function remark this is also going to return a string and inside of here we are just going to do a simple switch statement we are going to switch this grade the first case that we want to target here will be for a so if this grade is a we want to set this remark to be excellent so we're going to say this remark equal to excellent and then we're going to break out of the switch statement we're going to have another case for b if the grade is b remark is going to be good or very good this remark is going to be equal to very good and then break next case is c this remark is going to be equal to good if the student is in the c grade Case D, this remark equal to fair. And then break, do the same thing for case C. And then if it is not inside of any of these, we are just going to return default. So our default case is going to be very poor. This remark is equal to very poor. And then outside of the case, we can just return this remark. The last method that we are going to create here is going to be the final result method. So what this method does is going to actually check if the student fails one of the subject, then 
the students will automatically fail. So out of the five subjects that are here, if you fail one of them, then you have actually failed for that semester. Public function final result. Final result is going to return a string. And if you have noticed all of these methods, don't accept any parameter other than set mark and the constructor. So every other thing that we do is done inside of this class using the private properties. So we provide methods that allows the client to actually get what are relevant to them. In this case, it would be the remark, the final result, the total score, the average, the grade, and the name and ID of the student. Other than that, the operations are encapsulated inside of the class. So right here, we are going to say, if this subject one is less than 40, because if we come back here, you can see that if you get 40, you get a D, and we say that is actually fair. So you have actually not failed. So what we are saying here is you should be able to get 40 or above to be able to actually pass that specific subject. So we want to check for all of them. So that will be this subject two less than 40 or this subject three less than 40 or this subject four less than 40 or this subject five less than 40. So if any of these are less than 40, we can set this result to be equals to fail or fail. Otherwise, we can set this result to be equal to pass. So you can do it this way or directly just return this result equal to the value. So it depends on your programming style. So here we can say return this result. So those are all the methods that we want to define inside of the student class. We started by creating the constructor. And then we created a method to get the name of the student because the constructor needs two parameters to bootstrap the class, the ID and the name. So once we pass that in, we set it to the various corresponding properties and then we can actually get the name and the ID. And then we have a method to set mark, which is actually going to take five parameters and then assign it to the various properties that correspond to the parameters. And then next, we have a method to return the total score. It returns float. We have average score also returns float. And then we have grade returning string. And then we have remark returning string. And then we have the final result, which returns a string. All right, that'll be all for this lesson. In the next lecture, we are now going to hook it up to the form and then pass it using the pass form.php file that we have here and then display the result inside of index.php.